I can't believe what I'm seeing on the shelf here. Is that really what I think it is? If this artist isn't on your bolo, your be on the lookout for list, he definitely needs to be. Romero Brito is a Brazilian artist and sculptor, and his pieces can sell up into the thousands of dollars. Hello everyone, it's Tiffany with Thrifting Vegas. I shop at thrift stores, estate sales, garage sales and discount stores for items I can resell for profit on online platforms like eBay, Poshmark and OfferUp. It's a bright and sunny but chilly day here in Las Vegas and by popular request I am headed to one of my favorite Goodwills here, the location at Rainbow and Cheyenne. It's about a 10-15 minute drive for me but uh, I haven't been there in quite a few weeks. I have my thrifting Vegas blanket, I have my reusable shopping bags so let's head on down. I'll see you there. Here we are at the Rainbow and Cheyenne Goodwill. It's a little bit breezy today. The winds have picked up and the clouds have blown over, but uh, still a gorgeous day for the beginning of February. I'm trying to peek through the window to see if I can tell what the color of the week is. And it looks like it is i can't see is it gray i think it is let's go inside and see what they have let's go thrifting we will grab a cart oh that was easy so the color of the week is gray that means all items that have a gray sticker are 50 percent off We'll make our way to the hard goods section at the very back of the store. And as we walk, I would like to ask your help with something. At the beginning of every month, I get messages and emails and texts from my dear subscribers, letting me know that they have been unsubscribed from my channel, Thrifting Vegas. And I think I figured it out. YouTube cleans house at the end of every month and unsubscribes people who haven't watched certain channels in a while. So please go in, make sure you check the subscribe button, like and leave me a comment. It really helps my channel out. Here we are in the hard goods section. Let's start on this aisle just for a change. We'll go through the shelves and look at everything and see what we can find. Down here is a little trinket box. It looks quite vintage with burgundy and gold and flowers. Unfortunately, a bit worse for wear, so we will leave it. What is this? It looks like a geode that somebody has dyed pink. I actually prefer these in their natural state, so we'll leave it for somebody else. This, on the other hand, is fantastic. It's a luminescent jellyfish paperweight. It actually glows in the dark. These look fantastic on lighted bases. I just found one of these in the video I did with George the Antique Nomad at Paradise Valley Antique Mall. We'll pop it in the cart onto my Thrifting Vegas blanket so it doesn't get damaged. I'm looking at these shelves thinking they're not very full, which is really exciting because it means they're getting ready to bring out carts of new treasure. Here is a sweet little chick plate. $3, but sadly not very good quality, so we will leave that on the shelf. Look at this flying pig. It reminds me of Dagny from Flying Pig Thrifts. Unfortunately, it has a chipped ear, so we will have to leave him as well. Back here it looks like a drip glaze vase, but as I lift it up, it's very lightweight, not good quality, a florist's piece. So we'll leave that on the shelf as well. 
more candles. We've got some snow globes and figurines here. What's this? It's a very interesting but very thin glass canister. So I'm going to leave that as well. Is this a Squishmallow, a little Squishmallow pig? These look like Madame Alexander dolls, which is definitely a brand worth looking up on eBay when you find it. These are Wizard of Oz dolls. They're asking $6. If they were in mint condition, I might pick them up, but these are not. Little Joy to the World Christmas coasters. I quite like those. Here is a metal candle holder, very lightweight as I pick it up, so I'm going to leave it. Let's see, signs and plaques over here. Siegfried and Roy's secret garden frame. Sometimes um, if you find memorabilia from acts that are no longer playing, they're a good find. It's an empty box. Check out this vase here, another florist's piece. I can't believe what I'm seeing on the shelf here. Is that really what I think it is? Glassy Baby makes lovely candles that are ever so popular at the moment. However, when I pick this up, it just doesn't feel right. It looks like somebody's peeled the sticker already, so we are going to leave it. Let's keep going. Oh my goodness, look at this fellow. This is a vintage, I think he might be ironwood bird. It is absolutely incredible that he is not damaged. Look how thin his little neck and legs are. I absolutely love him. For $6, absolutely in the cart he goes. Let's keep going. On this shelf, a little resin car, a bit worse for wear at the front there. More candle holders, there's some very vintage glass, little saucers. I love this piece, but sadly the clear just doesn't sell well for me. If it was any other color, I would probably pick it up. Looking through here, it looks like there is an entire set of these little plates. Here is a plaque with yet another plate on top. Vintage saucer, transferware, that's not especially exciting. I am not afraid I was born to do this. That's a fun little trinket tray. As usual, lots and lots of clear glass. I have quite a bit in my inventory at the moment, so I am going to skip over those. Let's have a look what's in here. Looks like a wreath box. Wow, that is quite an impressive vintage wreath there. Lovely piece. Some canning jars somebody has painted. Seeing this again, I'm so sad that that leaf is broken. Ooh. Look at these. These are uh, decoupage polar bears. They're like the safari giraffes and the patriotic elephants that we find. Unfortunately, these aren't as in demand as some of the other pieces. And as you can see, the mummy one is really discolored on the side, that yellow, and she does have a massive crack under her arm there. So I'm not going to split up the baby and mummy, especially since they don't sell too terribly well for me. So we are going to leave these on the shelf for somebody else little candy dish back there. Again, clear glass doesn't do ever so well for me. We'll keep moving. More dolls and baskets. This looks like the Easter section here. Oh, there's a lone little Halloween jack-o'-lantern tea light. 
I think he came from Dollar Store or Dollar General. A few more Halloweeny bits. Fall wreaths. What's that? That looks like a little egg plaque, Easter egg. Let's have a look. Yep, just a little egg wall hanging. Another wreath down there. If this artist isn't on your bolo, your be on the lookout for list, he definitely needs to be. Romero Brito is a Brazilian artist and sculptor, and his pieces can sell up into the thousands of dollars. This piece is a salt and pepper shaker set, only $2, and it's a cat, which is great subject matter. So, yes, please. My new cart vibes worked. They just wheeled out some new treasures. At the bottom here, I've spotted a Fortnite battle bus. Fortnite is a popular video game. My son, Jake, is very, very good at this game. <laughs> he loves it. This appears to be for younger children though, but it might be worth looking up on eBay to see if it has resale value. Here we are in the baskets, woods, signs and plaques, having a look. This section is quite heavily stocked. Several stacks of things, all sorts. There's some secret stash books there. Those sell quite well for me, especially when they are old classic titles. Gone with the Wind or Treasure Island. This looks like somebody's painted an old football player wall hanging. It's very personalized though, so I think we will pass on that. More frames and baskets. I see so many plaques and wall hangings. Can you let me know in the comments if uh, that is still a popular thing? Do you decorate with plaques and uh, quotes and signs on your walls? Should it be something that I'm looking out for? Or uh, is that something that has come and gone? More shelves, little cubbies there, nesting trays. Dining al fresco. This sign has definitely been al fresco. It's a bit warped. It looks like it's been in the sun and rain. All kinds of storage pieces. If you need baskets or caddies, do check out your local Goodwill. I know I say this with all kinds of things, but uh, things like that can be really, really expensive. So do check your local Goodwill first. Oh, what is this piece under here? It's very interesting. Let's move this crate. Oh, I thought this was an antique piece, but it looks like it has been fabricated, made in India sticker. That is a shame. I thought this was going to be a wonderful antique display piece. It is quite fun but the quality just isn't there for me. Even more plaques. These canvas pieces show up all the time. I think um, companies send their overstock and closeouts straight to Goodwill. Looks like a little bird feeder, tiered bird feeder. It's a bit manky and dirty. Let's leave that. Some bowls, more baskets. Checking way up high. Always check high and low. You never know what you're going to find. Unstack stacks. Look under things. Look way at the back. Ooh, what is this? This is a reproduction. Little Native American wall hanging pot. Oh, there's a matching one down there for a pair. Paris sign. 
Oh, here is a little... I have one of these in my inventory, I believe. This one is not as good quality as the one I have. This duck is plastic. I believe mine is wood. Just not as nicely made. You fit two decks of cards in there. We'll leave that. Or boxes. Cutting boards. And signs. Do take a minute to check out cutting boards. The nice quality or vintage ones can make lovely wall hangings or risers for a vintage display. If you're enjoying the video, it would mean the world to me if you could give it a thumbs up, drop a comment below and subscribe to my channel with the little red button in the bottom right hand corner of your screen. Here we are in the vases, planters and florals having a look. Back here I've noticed this interesting piece. It's glass with either macrame or crocheted jute. I think what it is is either a floating candle holder or it could be used for a trailing plant. Unfortunately it's not very good quality. Thin glass and starched rope. Uh, definitely not a vintage piece, just a reproduction. So let's keep going here. Some little Ikea fake succulents there. Those are fun. Some candle holders. Lots of silk florals here. It's a little blue glass saucer. Oh, I like this corgi planter. He's fun. Life is short. Play with your dog. Absolutely. Oh, look at this. This is another Ikea piece. It's a rosemary plant. Two dollars. If you have a vintage booth in an antique mall, an excellent tip is to include pops of greenery on your shelves. It really creates an inviting shoppable atmosphere and I just found the perfect pot for it. Look at that. I absolutely love the yellow with the red. Really eye-catching. Just the perfect size. That has turned two blah pieces into something really fun. Just going to check and make sure I don't see a pot I like more. That one is definitely too big. The little plant gets absolutely lost in there. What's this back here? It's a little tin bucket with roses on. Again, I think this is going to be too big. Let's just check. Yes, it just falls right in there. Looks too big. So let's make sure one more time, but I think for 69 cents, this red and yellow one is perfect. I like the white, but again, as you can see, it falls right in, much too big. That's ideal. Let's go with it. Pop it into the cart. Oops, there we go. And moving on into the metals. Silver tone is first. Shelves are quite full. Do take an extra second in the metal section because things seem to blend together, especially for me. And sometimes it's easy to miss uh, some treasures. Moving into the gold tone. And black. Some little picture stands there. I have quite a few of those. Candle holders, sconces. Sometimes it's fun to find a piece <laughs> that's quite a mystery and see if you can work out what it is. Oh, what's this under here? Looks like a little elephant bag. It is, I think 
This is a made in India piece, mass produced, not too terribly good quality. What's that? Ooh, look at this beaded uh, placemat. I have the ideal use for this. You will have to wait and see, but this is perfect for a project I'm working on. Let's leave it there a second and just have a look, see, make sure I didn't miss anything in the colored metals, and tins and boxes. We are back here in the kitcheny bits. This is a thermos flask. Thermos has been around for quite a long time. So if you find a vintage or antique one, that's definitely worth looking up on eBay. It could be a nice profit. Here is a crystal candle holder, little gnome salt and pepper shaker. Unfortunately, quite chipped. If they weren't damaged, I would probably pick those up for $2. I was in this aisle earlier. I found the Romero Brito cat salt and pepper shaker. I decided to move on and come back because the aisle was quite crowded and it was getting difficult to film without getting other people in my shot. I like to respect everybody's privacy and uh, not film people as much as I can help it. Lots of bakers and platters oh look at this fish he is flash painted you can see the paints wearing off underneath will leave him this doesn't look like it matches these are two quite different colors little votive holders seashell theme again the shelves are quite sparse over here which means, excitingly, that they are planning to bring out more carts. Hopefully, they will do that before I leave. But if not, there's always next time. Clear glass, bakers and pitchers. Lots and lots of kitcheny bits. Look at these. These are fun. Quite brutalist looking napkin rings. They're metal. They're heavy. They're only $4. A complete set in their box. I do like those. They'd be very, very good in a modernist themed dining room. Nice quality. I think we will grab those. Let's pop that back in its slot. Moving on, lots more clear glass, some tumblers and martini glasses over here. Oh, here is a third little glass cobalt blue candle holder. Let's put this back over here with its friends so they can be sold all together. There we go. Where were we? Some coasters. What's this at the top? It's an outdoor barbecue and a homemade pasta drying rack up top there. It's a spinning spice rack. Travel tumblers and mugs more bowls chip and dip there some silver bowls the last section has all sorts of random kitcheny bits little tools and flatware silverware Sometimes treasures can be found in these baggies and if there's something uh, of value in there you can always pick up the whole thing Oh, and donate the rest. Look at these! This is Carrot Top uh, Luxor, only two dollars. This is a souvenir piece for the Las Vegas 51's baseball team that are no longer in existence and this 
is their mascot, Cosmo. So I am definitely going to pick these up. What a great find. There we go. We will pop them into our cart like so and head on into the small frames, little pictures. This one looks to be abalone and navy. I'm looking for vintage pieces, anything with stitchery, cruel or cross stitch. Over here, I have spotted a couple of interesting things. First, we have Minnie Mouse here. Oh, unfortunately, she's missing a hand. I think this is a clock. Even with missing hands, she's $5. So we will leave her. And this is a piece of Jim Shaw. Looks a little worse for wear. Let me see, often the fingers are chipped and they are as well in this case. Let me zoom in to show you. There, there we go, yes, chipped fingers, unfortunately. And uh, this particular model doesn't sell too terribly well on eBay anyway, so I'm not ever so disappointed. So we will leave her where she is and take a look at the large pieces of art here. Again, I am looking for vintage pieces, interesting frames. Old mirrors are a favorite of mine. Lots of modern pieces, canvases. Here's an original, it looks like somebody dabbled in oil paint. Native American scene, what's this one down here? No. Some photographs, pin boards, black and whites. Let's have a little look over here in the furniture. I am still on the hunt for a long sideboard for my dining room and some more storage. As much as I love our house, it doesn't have very much storage at all. This is quite a rustic piece. What is this over here? Looks like a vintage bench as I move closer it looks like a reproduction not ever such good quality I thought it was tapestry from a distance but it's not we'll leave that some tables and lamps TV stands Speaking of lamps, I thought I would pop back and take a look at the lamps here. This is a beautiful shade, it's a lovely amber color with white flowers painted, only $4. Looks like it's a bit chipped on the inside rim though, sadly. And this looks like a inexpensively made vintage lamp, looks like there's uh, another one on the shelf above as well. The style is lovely, but cheaply made. I have been asked why you don't ever seem to see me checking the book section of my Goodwill. That's because I'm a hard goods girl. Selling books for resale really doesn't thrill me. However, I will say that I love research books, 
books on vintage glass, depression glass, antique and vintage collectibles, and I have quite a lovely collection of books. I do refer to them very, very often, and whenever I get a quiet minute, I like to sit down and browse. That being said, today I happened to find these two lovely books on needlepoint and cross stitch. This first one uh, has a very comprehensive selection of stitches, very, very detailed. And the other is a amazing selection of patterns that you can create. It has a detailed instructions on each one very, very lovely. Each book, $5. Let's pop them in the cart. I thought I would take a second while we're in the aisle here to show you how I look these up. In the eBay app on my phone, I typed in A to Z of Needlepoint. I'm scrolling through and I see several listed for quite high prices. Now let's filter. We'll go down to sold items and that is going to tell us exactly what they are selling for in the current market. I see one $25, a couple sent from Australia. That's good enough for me. With that, we will call it a day. I'm headed to the checkout with my treasures. Stay tuned for the haul. So as I was driving home from Goodwill, I suddenly had a little panic thought and wondered if the candle holder I had passed up actually was a glassy baby. I've popped in some pictures here. Let me know what you think. Did I just make a massive mistake? Here. Here on my counter is everything I found at Goodwill. Both cats are here inspecting my finds. I don't often look in the book section for resale, just for books for my own research purposes. But today I was fortunate enough to find two amazing books on cross stitch and needlepoint. The first one is A to Z of Needlepoint, the ultimate resource for beginners and experienced embroiderers. This book is amazing. It has every single stitch you can possibly think of and step-by-step -step images of how to execute the stitch and what the finish pattern looks like. It's really well done, incredibly detailed and thought out. It would be an amazing tool for anybody who enjoys stitchery and or cross stitch. Whether you're a beginner or very experienced, it shows you stitches that you may never have come across. Just incredible pieces can be created with a needle and thread. Unbelievable. I paid just $5 for this book and I am going to ask $20. The other book is The Best of Cooler Design Studio and this book is unbelievable. It contains patterns to create all kinds of stitchery pieces. It gives you the pattern. It tells you exactly what strands of thread you will need and how to do it. Look at the detail of this. I have a feeling that you might need to be uh, relatively experienced in order to do these. Look at the cats. This is so amazing. What a great tool this would be if you have 
the time and inclination to create incredible pieces like these. Ooh, look at the hats. This has a Mary Englebright look to it. Really nice. Here comes Bear. I paid $5 for this and I am going to ask $20. These are amazing. I absolutely love them. They are napkin rings. They're very substantial, silver tone metal. There are eight in the set. They would look fantastic in a modernist designed uh, dining room. Really nice weight to them. I paid $4 for the set of eight here and I am going to ask $25. Back here, we have our incredible mid-century bird. I think he is a crane. Let me move him in front of the wall so you can see. I believe he's a crane, possibly Danish. He has um, inset little eyes here. I'm going to say he is either ironwood I'm not sure if anybody can help me out. Possibly Teak. I paid $6 for him and I am going to ask 45 I had so much fun with this piece in the store. I was looking for an additional piece of greenery to add to my vintage booth in Danny the Niche Lady's store. Good stuff came across this. It's a very simple little plastic rosemary bush from Ikea. I paid two dollars for it. The fun came when I was looking for the pot. Came across this, absolutely love the contrasting red with the yellow. It's the perfect size for this plant. Not too big, not too small. Adds a pop of color, lovely contrast. The plant was $2, the pot 69 cents, and this is going to go into my booth. Over here, we have a couple of uh, famous Las Vegas personalities. First, the comedian Carrot Top. If you've never seen Carrot Top and have the opportunity, do go see him. He is uh, incredibly witty and uh, intelligent, very, very funny guy. Uh, I paid $2 for this carrot top bubble, bubble head, which is a souvenir piece uh, for the Las Vegas 51's baseball team. There's the back. The Las Vegas 51's are now called the Aviators. Uh, so this is quite a rare collectible now. This guy <laughs> is a bank. His name is Cosmo and he was the 51's mascot. I'm not sure whether he still is or not. He possibly is. The stopper is an intact. He was also $2. I shall ask $25 a piece on these two. Over here we have our fabulous luminescent jellyfish it's a paperweight very similar to the one i found at shopping with george the antique nomad at paradise valley antique mall this one was a little better deal i got this one for two dollars uh, and just as with the other one which sold very very quickly i shall ask 25 dollars this is the star of my show a fantastic Romero Brito uh, salt and pepper shaker in the shape of a cat. You may have noticed that somebody has taped this guy together um, backwards. The cat has a little tongue at the back there. He's absolutely lovely. The top is, I believe, pepper, the bottom salt. There's the bottom. I paid $2 for this guy. I shall offer it at 25 
that if you care to research Romero Brito, you'll find that some of his original pieces of art go up in the thousands of dollars. He also does sculpture and he is a favorite artist um, on the cruise ship auctions, I'm told. Over here, we have our beaded uh, placemat and I have a plan for this. I can't let you in on it yet because I don't know if the plan is going to go through, but I have the perfect use for this piece if everything falls into place. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed my trip to Goodwill, the haul, and the pieces I found. Please stay tuned for some fun footage of our new puppy, Rio. She is home. She is uh, <laughs> 10 weeks old now, full of energy. She is uh, keeping Bear on his toes. I have never seen Bear happier. He is the proud big brother showing her the ropes. I've also included some uh, film of the hummingbirds in our garden. We have four hummingbird feeders now. I had to increase them because they were emptying so quickly. All the little hummingbirds come to our garden during the winter to uh, help get themselves through the cold spell when there are very few other sources of food. So please do enjoy that. Of course, a few snips of our cats. Uh, Bandit and Ziggy. Thank you again. Please like, subscribe, leave me a comment. If you see anything you're interested in purchasing, uh, please do send me an email, thriftingvegas.tiffany at gmail.com. Please include your name, your address, the item you're interested in, your offer, and I'll see you next time. Bye. This is the best day everybody's together in the car. <laughs> okay, Bearzy. Are you ready? Okay, Rio? Are you ready? He's a good boy. <laughs> Hi, Rio. Oh, there's right near sisters. Oh. Yeah. She's a bicolored and she's disabled. Yeah, big girl. 17.8, I think. She was she's 18 pounds, Rio's 18. 18.6. 18.6.7. How much? 17 and 10 ounces. 17. Oh, yeah, she's almost 18. You're okay, you can just be it. How much was real? Baby <laughs> sister right there. Oh. Who is it, Bear? Here's a Rio. Here's a Rio. Hello, Rio. Oh, there's you a little baby. <laughs> Hi, baby. Hello. Okay, you're good. You're gonna get stuck. Hold on. All right. Why don't you spread one of the towels out just in case? She might be a uh, car sick dog. Can you spread the towel up? Just pick one and spread it out. We can have. Her. There you go. Go, Rio. Okay. Rio! Hi! Hi, puppy! Hi, puppy! <laughs> oh my gosh! Can we all have it? Active much? Yeah, she can. Rio! Rio! Rio, come this way! <laughs> Rio, you want my angle? No, you want come my shoes? Rio! Why don't you wear my shoes? Give me my shoes. 
snowshoes don't have fun laces. <laughs> She's an ankle biter. <laughs> Dirty foots? Are those dirty foots? No, that's not my colors are my colors are there. Yeah, you know what you need? You need your claws trimmed. She loves this the plastic bags, of course, which you're not supposed to wash. Have you got the ball? <laughs> Ziggy on your crate. <laughs> he says hi. Hi, Rio. Girl, are you tired? Are you tired? Oh, Leo, are you tired, Mama? <laughs> <laughs> 